Well, Sky News can reveal the government is expecting to record a surplus for the 2022-23 year, the first surplus recorded by a federal government since 2007-8. In that year, the Rudd and Howard government shared the surplus result of $19.7 billion. Government sources have told Sky News that final revenue numbers have come through this week with improved commodity results, which show that a surplus will be recorded this year, but the budget is still in structural deficit with deficits in years to come. I asked Finance Minister Katie Gallagher about this today. It's my understanding that you and the Treasurer will be delivering a surplus for 22-23 in Tuesday's budget. How big will it be? Well, Andrew, uh, people will have to wait for Tuesday night to see uh, the budget in full, but I think the Treasurer and I have been clear that for uh, some time now that there's a significant improvement in the short term. That interview to play shortly. Now, my understanding is that a modest increase to job seeker across the board and further cost of living assistance has been considered in light of this result. Shadow Treasurer Angus Taylor told Kieran on the show earlier this week that Jim Chalmers should be delivering a surplus. The truth is with this kind of commodity income inflow, the strength of the job market, really they should be delivering a very significant structural surplus, but uh, I fear that's not what we're going to see. They need to deliver budget surpluses over the forwards. We have heard these sorts of promises before, of course, and they never came to fruition. The four years of surpluses I announced tonight are a powerful endorsement of the strength of our economy, resilience of our people and the success of our policies. Tonight I announce that the budget is back in the black and Australia is back on track. But ultimately, at least in terms of this surplus, there is only two months left in the financial year. So if Treasurer Jim Chalmers is promising it, it looks like he's going to be able to deliver it. This is some turnaround after the forecast in the October budget of a deficit result of $37 billion. Even that result, though, was half the deficit that had been forecast in March last year. The deficit for 2022-23 is now forecast to be $36.9 billion an improvement of $41.1 billion. Well, as I said, the Finance Minister, Katie Gallagher, joined me a short time ago. Katie Gallagher, thanks for joining us. It's my understanding that you and the Treasurer will be delivering a surplus for 22-23 in Tuesday's budget. How big will it be? Well, Andrew, uh, people will have to wait for Tuesday night to see uh, the budget in full, but I think the Treasurer and I have been clear that for uh, some time now that there's a significant improvement in the short term, but the longer term um, years, the out years of the budget and into the medium term remain a significant budget challenge. So uh, people will see the numbers on Tuesday night, uh, but there's still uh, certainly a welcome improvement, but a big job ahead of us as we continue to repair the budget. Look, I, I know you feel probably you can't confirm it now, but I am, I, I'm pretty justified in believing this, I believe. If that were to occur, the surplus, that must feel, would feel like quite an achievement for you and the Treasurer. I know what you're saying about the years going forward, but... You know, Wayne Swan predicted them, Josh Frydenberg predicted them, the Coalition made a big deal of it. How much of a, how much of a big deal would that be for you and the Treasurer if that were to occur? Well, again, the, the significant improvement we're seeing in the near term is welcome and a part of that is obviously the things that we're selling overseas, we're getting good money for, our, our employment levels are very strong and that means our payments uh, for people uh, are less than what would have ex been normally expected to be. So there's a combination of things there, but there's also a big part is around the restraint we're showing, the fact that in October we banked a lot of the revenue upgrades you'll see a continuation of that approach where we're serious about budget repair. We want to show restraint. Uh, we want to make investments where we can afford them. But there's a bigger budget repair story 
uh, that we need to continue to work on and you'll see that work doesn't finish on Tuesday night. If anything, um, you know, it accelerates as we work on the longer term and medium term pressures. It's also my understanding that even though it's been reported there are job seeker changes for over 55s, perhaps only over 55s, that you have been able through the budget situation to extend that. Is it possible there'll be a modest rise to, to all job seeker payments on, on Tuesday night? Well, there's certainly a lot of speculation around uh, the place at the moment about what the budget's got in it, what it doesn't have in it. Um, I can confirm there will be a, a significant or substantial cost of living package that's included in the budget that's targeted to those who are most vulnerable, uh, and you will see that on Tuesday night. Um, we've made no secret that we wanted to review all the payments, every budget, to make sure we could do what we can. You'd expect Labor governments to do that. We've been doing that work through uh, this budget, um, but we've also been mindful of other pressures on the budget and other people, you know, other areas where we have to invest as well. So I think the budget overall, you'll see that strong cost of living package. Andrew, but you'll also see, you know, I guess a budget is thousands of decisions taken um, together, uh, which create the final budget document, which is really about how you balance up all of those competing pressures. Um, and you'll see that on Tuesday night. We are in the very irritating part of the budget process um, this final few days before Tuesday, where there's a lot of speculation and, um, you know, we're all sitting here saying, wait to see what's in the budget on Tuesday. No, I appreciate that. I, I, I see the difficulties for you sort of on both sides, though, if I can put this scenario to you. If you were to deliver a surplus, people would be saying where you should be doing more on JobSeeker and on all these other demands and, and requests for new money. On the other hand, we can see with the rate rise on Tuesday and inflation generally, if you did too much, you could blow the whole show up, couldn't you? I mean, that's sort of where you're at, isn't it? Yeah, look, like the, it's been a challenging environment to land a budget. There's no doubt about that. Inflation being the key challenge, uh, how um, we respond to that um, partly is through the restraint that we need to show. We don't want to be making the Reserve Bank's job harder. So we are mindful of that and it's been central to some of our thinking. But we're also having to do a couple of other things, as you would expect, expect in any budget, any budget, it isn't just about one thing, it's about a whole range of things. So, you know, looking at how we can make that sensible cost of living um, investments where we can and where it doesn't um, add to inflation and also deal with some of these other issues we've uncovered, some of the legacy issues, the terminating measures issues and also where we look to find savings and reprioritise within government that gets a good outcome too. So you'll see all of that in the budget. Um, you'll see, you know, that we are deadly serious about um, our fiscal strategy, about budget repair, but we're also a Labor government, a government with a heart that wants to do the right thing where we can afford it in a responsible way uh, to make a difference in people's lives. And just on that, the, the change to the single parent pension that's been flagged, it's certainly almost been confirmed there will be a change. That's quite personal for both you and the Prime Minister, isn't it? Well, I think you come... When you've lived on a payment, you come with an additional perspective, I think, that those that haven't lived on a payment um, might not have experienced. So, for me, and I, I don't want to speak for the PM, but obviously, you know, um, his story is well known. Uh, but for me, you know, unexpectedly found myself on a, a widow's pe pension and then the sole parent payment pretty early in my life. And, um, you know, for me, it was life-changing. So, I completely understand why we have a safety net why it's important to do what you can where you can uh, to make sure you're making a difference and, and supporting people through what's often very difficult periods in their life. Uh, and we have to balance that up with how do we get move people off payments as well, which is, you know, what happened in my circumstance where it was the support of the payment that allowed me to move off the payment. And, um, you know, we've been mindful of all of that as we put this budget together. But, yeah, it, it's, it's been a very challenging set of circumstances. It's my first full budget process. Um, I'm, part, I'm looking forward to Tuesday night just so we can, you know, have a discussion more openly about all the things that are in there. And uh, also the, the Treasurer has flagged a couple of times uh, a cleaner energy package. I guess uh, appropriate timing with the, the news on Snowy Hydro this week, isn't it? Is that... 
Is that game changing what we're going to see on clean energy in the budget? Well, there's a, there'll definitely be a focus, as I would expect budgets in the future will, as we continue this, you know, to se try to seize the economic opportunities that come with the transformation to a cleaner energy environment. Um, obviously, as part of our cost of living package, we'll have those um, energy payments, again, which is trying to deal with some of the um, pressures people have been seeing with their energy bills. But we need to also, while we're doing that, um, support the, you know, the transition that's occurring in front of our eyes and make sure we seize the opportunities that come with that. And that's not going to be solved in one budget. Um, we'll, you'll see that over a course of, of budgets, I think, as we continue this transition to electrify our economy. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's part of the growth story in the budget and it's an important part of any budget, not only what you're doing to ease cost of living pressures and help households, it's also what are you doing about the opportunities ahead? And uh, that's why I, when I'm talking about the budget with people, I say don't look at it as one measure or one response. Look across the budget with everything that we're balancing here and um, see the budget in the context of, you know, these are the decisions we've taken here and then we continue on in government and we'll um, continue with the strategy we've outlined. And the aged care worker pay rise, you're confident that and other wage rises won't drive up inflation? Well, we haven't seen wages as part of the inflation uh, issue in the country. So we don't think, you know, and I don't think there's any evidence that would say that, uh, that wage rises are fueling inflation. We want sensible and sustainable wage increases. Obviously, this aged care one has been a long time in the making and I think what it's dealing with is, a, is, is in a sense, the undervaluing and underpayment of a critical and essential workforce. Um, you know, we've made provision for those wages. We know the care economy is a, a huge opportunity in terms of economic growth as well. We know that's where there's going to be a lot of growth in jobs. We need to find more workers. If we're going to do that, we're going to have to find... We, they're going to have to be paid properly. Um, but again, this is, you know, responding to a Fair Work Commission case. We're committed to funding it. We're delivering on that. And I have to say, for 90% of that workforce that is women in undervalued, underpaid work, this is a, a very good outcome. And just finally, why was it important with the new defence spending over the forward estimates that that come from savings as opposed to being new money? Well, um, you'll see the budget when it's handed down on Tuesday around um, defence um, and defence spending, but we've worked really closely, and Jim and I, and we really appreciate the work that Richard Miles and his team have put in to looking at where, as we kind of reposition the defence force, the opportunities to reprioritise within um, existing envelopes. I mean, the defence for the defence budget is funded a bit differently to other budgets in the sense that they get a provision which they allocate and it's a longer term provision. And so they perhaps have more opportunities than other departments to reprioritise within that. I'm not saying it's easy for them at all, uh, but we certainly appreciate that they've been able to look at their existing spending and look at where they can make um, you know, reprioritise uh, within that. But we have also accepted that outside the forwards and into the medium term, there will have to be extra investment in defence to deliver on the, you know, security and safety of our citizens, and we're committed to funding that as well. Katie Gallagher, thanks so much for your time this afternoon.